There's lots of games that I love, and there's some games that I hate to love because they just make it into my soul, and I'm like, no, I'm not gonna play this game anymore, but then I just keep going back to it to try to beat it, but I can't. One of the things I love most in my life is Magic the Gathering. I, I got no shame, it's amazing. It's super popular, it's super awesome. You should play it too. And when it, they put it on the Xbox, I was like, this is a great way to play it. They have all these decks I wouldn't normally play with right there at my fingertips. Well, here's the thing with playing a game based on chance with a computer. The computer controls your chance. If they don't want you to win, you're not gonna win. If I'm like, oh, I only need one card right now to win the game, the computer knows I only need that one game and then it won't give it to me. And then I'll lose and then I'll have to fight Nico Bolas all over again because he's a douchebag. Jace, seriously, any control deck. I'm like, all right, he has one card in his hand. He's already used 20 counters on me. There's no way he can have another counter. Let me put down my creature that's gonna help me win the game. Boom, there's another counter. Why? Because the computer doesn't want you to beat the game. It's why you can't do video slots at Vegas. It's rigged. The computer controls it. The computers are taking over. Games we hate to love. Uh, I know I'm gonna get a lot of flack for this one in the comments, but Call of Duty games, Damn it, Call of Duty games, I hate to love them. I don't think I've played through a Call of Duty single player campaign and I was like, that was bad. That wasn't a good game. They're always interesting. They have these crazy set pieces and huge explosions and ridiculous action sequences that would cost like hundreds of million dollars to do if they were actually in a movie. Uh, but you get to play through because it's, it's in a video game. And then the multiplayer, come on, let's be real. The multiplayer is pretty fun. It's a good time for like a little bit and then it gets old and, and you move on, but the game is fun. They're gonna be like, so Hinky is uh, such a sellout. He's he's a fanboy. No, I'm not. I just like when a game's good, then you play it and you enjoy it. You could criticize it for being too similar every year. That's a legitimate criticism, but it's still fun. You still try it because it's new, and you're like, maybe it will be a little different, and then it's not different, and you're like, F Call of Duty, just be a little different, and then I can love you again. But then they don't. Games we hate to love. Who remembers Maximum Carnage for the Super Nintendo? Man, that game, I loved it. But I also hated it. I hated to love it because the, it was just so difficult. You ran out of continues. It was old school. There were no like save points. Once you ran out, you ran out and then you were screwed. It was terrible. It was a terrible game, but it was a lot of fun. And once you get to Carnage, it didn't even tell you how many levels there were in the instruction manual. Manual. It's like levels 1 through 20 are this, and then 20 through 30, and then it's like 50 plus, and it had like question marks. You didn't even know how many damn levels there were. And it was just so much bashing enemies, and you had to play it all in one go, because otherwise you'd lose your mojo. It was just, it was, I hated it, but I loved it. Well, it's a classic game that doesn't get enough love these days. Mega Man! Actually, I, I say that, but he's about to show up in the new uh, Super Smash Bros. game, so yeah, he's getting plenty of love. One who doesn't get love from? Me! It's hateful love. It's love that hurts. I've always loved Mega Man games, but I'm not very vocal about it, because I've never beaten a Mega Man game. Uh, I played a lot of 2, and I played a lot of 3 on the NES. Uh, I didn't have the first one, didn't really get the rest of them, because I never beat 2 or 3. God damn it, Gemini Man stage. I beat all the normal bad guys, made it really far into the main stage, but you have to like fight every guy, every bad guy again, and then you get to like the floating head thing. I, just, I couldn't beat it, never beat it. Just, but then I'm like, maybe like a week later, you're like, you want a game I haven't beaten? Mega Man. Maybe I'll play Mega Man. Man, little Joshua was stupid. Now this game, this is gonna be embarrassing. This is an embarrassing admission, uh, cause I'm pretty sure this game was targeted at teenage girls, but it was called Cookies and Cream. <laughs> If the name doesn't give it away, what? it was, let me just, hold on, just listen for a second. It's called Cookies and Cream, and you play as these two cute little bunny rabbits. And it, what, basically the way the game works is, <laughs> just, just chill out, come on, give me a chance here. So the game is, you play, a, it's a, like a split screen, and you're these two little bunny rabbits, and you're hopping along through these little puzzles, and you gotta like help each other along, and you like, time out when you're switching levers and stuff so that the bunny doesn't like fall in the water and die or whatever. But you, yeah, one bunny's cookie and one bunny's cream. And you just, you have to make it to the end of the level together and then you're happy little bunnies. And like, let me just, come on, all right. You're laughing, you're laughing and you're saying to yourself, Sankey's a little, little wussy man girl. But let me tell you something. If you played that game, you would love it. It's so awesome. It's a lot of fun. Cookies and cream. I don't even hate to love it. I love to love it but I hate the reaction I get when I tell people that I love it. 
Does anyone remember the very first uh, multiplayer Resident Evil game? It was called Resident Evil Outbreak. And it was terrible, but it was terribly awesome. You could communicate with your partners, but no one had headsets, and you never had like three other friends who had the game. You would always just go online and hope that you got in a good group of people. The special moves it w is what made it ridiculous, because there was one guy who his special ability was he would just flop over and play dead. And if you had that guy in, on your team, you knew you were f***ed. Because as soon as you get into a firefight, you're like, All right, everyone, cover an action! And, oh, f Jimmy's playing dead. I guess he's going to be f***ing useless for this entire f***ing scenario. It was like Left 4 Dead, but it was like actual Left 4 Dead. Because in Left 4 Dead, I feel like very rarely does someone just leave their teammates. But in that game, it was like, f*** it. If I'm near the exit and you're f***ed, f*** you. Have fun with your zombie orgy, because that's what it looked like as like 80 zombies ate the guy and you just sprinted away and I was guilty of it too if I'm near an exit and like instead of opening doors with keys you could just keep bashing the door till it opened and if I bash that door and that door finally came open I'm gone I don't care if you're over there looking for the key sorry see ya I'm out of there I, I guess I was the reason people hated to love Resident Evil Outbreak too as well but it was a lot of fun god that game was fun it's too bad people are such douches like me Cookies and Cream. It's a wonderful game. And that's probably one of the reasons why I'm single. <laughs> Next character I'm most like, let's say character I most aspire to be like, and that's gonna be Snorlax. The dude just sleeps through battles. Like, I really appreciate Snorlax's complete uh, ability to disrespect all authority. 